What I done they for fire Oh boy, to see them done they for once They boy together My belly done the sweet plus Everybody they together You're welcome to Foodies and Spice and Amazing China series starts today. I am so happy. Okay, you've seen all the buzz, you've seen the promo, now it's time for us to start seeing the real thing. This is our third travel series on Foodies and Spice, but this season will make it like our 10th season of being on TV. Yeah! Alright, so it's time for us to go to China for you to see the beautiful things that we brought for you. Sit back, relax, go call all your friends, family, neighbors, everybody. Foodies and Spice Amazing China is on. <laughs> China, officially the People's Republic of China, is an East Asian country and the world's most populous country. China has always been on my bucket list of countries to visit. And as you can see, we ticked it. Hello, Beijing! Me and four members of my team had the most amazing experience in China. Sit back, relax, let me take you on this ride. It's a long, long ride across over six regions in China. First up is the Tiananmen Square in Beijing. Tiananmen Square is a city square in Beijing, meaning Gate of Heavenly Peace. It was such a busy tourist site when we arrived that I felt like, why are all those people here? Well, I got to find out later that it links the Forbidden City, which a lot of Chinese people, especially the old ones, consider a privilege to see these days. We will get to that story later. Tiananmen Square contains the monuments of the people's heroes, the Great Hall of the People, the National Museum of China, and the Mausoleum of Mao Zedong. That is where they bury Mao Zedong. Okay, yeah, that is Mao Zedong, revered by the Chinese and known as the founding father of the People's Republic of China. And that happened in October 1st, 1947. It was declared in this Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square is one of the largest city squares in the world. Trust me, it is large. And several important events in Chinese history have occurred and still occurs here. Now, what caught my attention? Lots of people in the square, these kids on a salute on one of the monuments and they get to stand there for a while till someone else takes over from them after their shift. Same as these soldiers, whom I was told that all the soldiers recruited in this place have the same height and they have to be very handsome. 3. The beautiful flower garden in the square, well groomed and in bloom. Of course, we have to take lots of pictures. This square was built in 1415 during the Ming Dynasty. Don't worry, before the series is over, you're going to hear a lot about dynasties. But this one was built by the Ming Dynasty and this square has seen fighting, celebrations, destructions, renovations, revolutions, ceremonies and of course, lots of visitors. Can you see this line? Now, that is the middle. And in Chinese philosophy, the middle is very important. Centuries ago, only the emperor walked on this middle. But you can see today, all the plenty plenty legs where they march them up and down. Anyway, 
let's go into the Forbidden City to see more of this Emperor's Middle Town. The Forbidden City will be very recognizable to most of you, especially if you watch Chinese epic movies like The Last Emperor, which was actually shot on location here and won 9 Academy Awards. The history of this magnificent city or palace dates back to the 15th century when it was built as a palace of the Ming emperors of China and it was used as a palace for many emperors for over 500 years to the end of the Qing dynasty in 1912. What you are seeing right now took over 14 years to build from 1406 to 1420 and employed the workforce of about 100,000 skilled artisans and up to about 1 million laborers. Yes, you heard me right, 1 million laborers. The original architecture made use of precious wood, large stone carvings, gold bricks, etc. and even some of these stones were transported in the most amazing ways. Can you imagine transporting these big rocks with snow, ice? Yeah, you can read more about that. On completion of this palace, Emperor Zhu Di moved in in 1420 and Beijing became the official capital of the empire. However, barely nine months after the construction, some parts of the palace burned down. My tour guide told me it may have probably been caused by lightning strikes. Anyway, it was rebuilt. And as you can see, these cisterns were used to store water in case of fire emergencies. The Forbidden City consists of 980 surviving buildings. However, my tour guide told me that there are 9,999.5 rooms in the palace. The only reason they didn't make it to 10,000 is because they believe God has 10,000 rooms and the emperor should have a little less. The Forbidden City is located in the middle or center of China. Remember what I told you earlier about the middle? Yeah, it is known as the Imperial Way. Only the emperor and only him alone walks on this imperial way in the Forbidden City and the only people who are given the privilege to walk on it at least once in their lifetime is one, the imperial students who pass excellently in their exam and are given the walk of fame just once in their life to honor them and that is all. Secondly, the empress on her wedding day can walk alongside with the emperor after the wedding ceremony and that is it for life. Now, see how we are all walking up and down, stepping on this imperial way without caution. Anyway, I know you must be wondering why it is called the Forbidden City. Well, to answer your question, during the reign of the emperor, you can't get anywhere close to the first gate of this palace without being invited by the emperor or else, or your is your case. My tour guide told me that commoners cannot dare come close they heard about the Forbidden City in their homes and villages and could only imagine the tales they heard. Today, most of the people, mostly the old people you see here, have come to walk the Forbidden City in honor of their ancestors who were really forbidden to come here. Let me hear you say, freedom, 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 freedom. Another thing that depicts freedom in this Forbidden City today is the ability to wear color yellow and red. It was considered as imperial colors and only the emperor is allowed to wear yellow and red. These days, people are allowed to wear any color they choose to wear in China, even inside the Forbidden City. It was a super long walk in the Forbidden City. We had to sit to rest at some point, moving from one gate to the other. And then, tour guide said, we have not even gotten to the main palace. We are not in the outside of the official area. Just be outside the city. Ah, Lata Ro. I felt like I'm done. But hey, it's one way in, one way out. As we start time, we will finish them. Oh yeah, we move. More gates to encounter. But first, I need a cool ice cream. Foodies and Spice, Amazing China, 
is powered by Beijing Wanziang Travels. Welcome back! The waka just started. We just did start. Yeah, from Beijing, we went to like another six cities or five cities. So you just need to sit down, relax and enjoy this ride. If you want to know more about the Forbidden City, you can, you know, check online, read about it. It is very, very, very amazing. Like the whole story of that place is amazing. But we'll continue next week on the series. So today, what are we making? You see, say I end up with ice cream. It was a very hot day. So I want to replicate the taste of that ice cream I had in the Forbidden City. And you know, it's beautiful. I want to show you how to make something very easy with just two ingredients. Just two ingredient ice cream. Oh, maybe three. Yeah. Just two ingredient ice cream and just one thing for flavor is what I'll be teaching you how to do right now. I have watermelon for that. I have condensed milk and of course mints. These three will make you perfect ice cream on a sunny day. Now, when you go out for walks like that during holidays, summer, you are checking out things. The next thing you want to think about is street food, things you are buying on the road and all of that. So to infuse some into this dish today, I am making puff puff. Yes, Nigerian puff puff. We are all going to love it. So first things first, let me call the things for the puff puff. Here we go flour. I have three cups of flour. I have um, about one and a half spoon of yeast. I have about one spoon of baking powder. I have one cup of sugar. I have vanilla and one egg. Now I'm going to put all of this together and fry that puff puff with oil. Okay, now let's go. Holics, welcome back. So, uh, watermelon here. Now, we all know that watermelon is one fruit that has got lots of water, hence the name watermelon. Yeah, so on a very hot day when you're feeling dehydrated, watermelon works. And uh, in Nigeria, almost everywhere in the world, watermelon is very, very how do I put popular kind of. I ate watermelon like every day in China. Now you can remove as much seed as you want to, but just in case it's wasting your time, watermelon seed is not bad. Yeah, it's actually good. It's actually very nutritious. So if it's wasting your time, you just chop and join. Nothing will happen. It will just add more nutrition to your body. So the next thing I will do now is to start blending the watermelon. Okay, now this is good. I told you this thing, you can add a third ingredient and my third ingredient is mint. It's good. That's fine. So this is good. So I'll just pour it into a bowl. Uh, so the condensed milk goes in. So this is ready and I am going to pour it into this pan. So if you don't have this kind of pan, just look for anything at all that you can put in the fridge or freezer to freeze that will not break. Okay? Okay. So I have two things. I'm going to send these two things now and I'm going to send them to the freezer and the next thing will be our puff puff. So now it's time for the puff puff and we need yeast. And to start the yeast, I need lukewarm water. So I just warmed up a little bit of water, like lukewarm. It shouldn't be hot, hot, just lukewarm. So I think um, this is fine. You just need little. So if you need more water, you can add. So I have like one spoon to one and a half spoon here. I'm just going to stir it. Okay. 
So I'll set it in a corner. So I have my bowl here. I'll add the three cups of flour. Baking powder. The baking powder is about one tablespoon. Have one cup of sugar here. I'll just mix, mix, mix. Now egg is optional. If you want to, you add, if you don't want to. So I'll just add one egg and just stir it in. So I'm using just a dash of vanilla extract. Now you can add a pinch of salt if you want. Okay. So the next thing that goes in now is the yeast. This consistency is just okay. So you just like do like so to be in some air into it. Okay, so this is good. So I'm going to take the cling film now and cover it. Then I'll take a clean kitchen towel, cover it as well, and send it to um, a warm place, warm place to rise. About 45 minutes to one hour, that's um, the time for the yeast to rise. You can be checking, especially if you are using a glass bowl, so you can be checking how risen it is. You can even put it under the sun, it helps. Yeah. Hello Foodaholics, it's Amazing China! And if you've not been following me on social media, you better go and start following me. All the people following me have seen all my beautiful pictures from China. But of course, those of you watching, it's time for you to start seeing everything I did in China. It was amazing, trust me, it was. You know, this is our third um, TV travel series. I do travel series on my blog in those days, write about places that I visit. But this is the official third TV travel series. We've done French Fusion, in case you've not seen that, you can go see it on YouTube. We've done Flavors of Azerbaijan, you can go see it on YouTube. And now this is Amazing China. And for the next 13 weeks, I'll be bringing you all the beautiful things that happened in China. So it was so amazing when I got this um, partnership with Beijing Waxian Limited. Yes, um, I was actually looking for someone to partner with me to travel to China. And at the same time, they were looking for someone to partner with and somehow, 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 God's favor linked us and this um, amazing China series happened all expense paid. Yes, I did not pay a dime for it. The only thing I spent my money on in China was probably to buy Chinese dresses. <laughs> All right, so that is how beautiful this amazing China um, was. Um, it was so favorable and I'm so happy for it. Also, something I want to talk to you about today is in case you want to, by the time you're watching this series or checking out my uh, Gina Foods and Spice on Instagram and Facebook, Foodie Spice, and you feel like you actually want to spend some time in China, travel and see these things that I saw, it is not very easy to get a group tourism visa. All you need to do is send me a message and I will tell you how. Yes, and um, the group tourism um, package that Beijing Waxian Limited has as a Bravo Global Travels, uh, they are going in October or November. So if you want to join that group, quickly send me a message and I will let you know how to be part of it. It's very easy and quite affordable too. Yes, uh, what else? Read your messages. Let me read the messages from YouTube. Yeah, so this is from the sandwich. So I've got a message from Messi or Lokpa. She said it looks so yummy and very easy to prepare. Thank you so much for sharing and you look amazing. Thank you so much, Messi. I try as much as possible to make recipes easy. If I find any shortcuts, we'll do it here. Yeah. So um, Francis Victoria says, nice, ma'am. 
can you kindly emphasize on the process I need to follow after trying mine? Okay, okay. I actually ask that if you try yours, if you try your recipe, send me pictures on my DM at Gina Foodies and Spice on Instagram or inbox uh, facebook.com slash foodies spice or just send me an email foodies and spice at gmail.com those three ways i can easily get any of your messages then on more you say i love this i'll definitely try it please does the grill pan do the same thing with the toaster and i answered i said yes the reason why i use the grill pan is because i know most people do not have toasters electric toasters so if you do not have electric toasters just use your pan it doesn't even have to be the grill pan you can use the ordinary frying pan all you need to do is toast this side toast that side and you place um, your your fish and any other thing you are using so that's for that um, that's the much messages i can take but the truth is anytime you send me a message on youtube i take my time to find time to answer your message about 45 minutes to one hour or whenever the puff puff butter rice then it's ready so it's time for me to start frying the puff puff now but first i already put oil inside this frying pan puff puff needs a lot of oil to fry because it's deep frying deep frying that the um, butter will need to come to the top so it needs a lot of oil for that so i'm just going to turn this on now and allow the oil get hot so i got this um puff puff butter from shaw's gifts and household yeah so it's not only puff puff butter it's just a butter dispenser really so you can use it to just get like equal shapes with all your butters so i'll be bringing out the puff puff butter now Ooh, it has double the size Yep, 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 yep. I scoop some butter in here. Alright guys. Um let's begin. Yay. I actually got that first batch and I pray I don't finish eating it. It's very nice. Okay, this is ready. It's ready. I'll turn the gas off now and I'll go check on the sorbet. It should be ready by now. Okay, so our sorbet is here. Hopefully, it's frozen. Uh, I doubt it's not too frozen. It's not particularly frozen. Let's. This looks good. It's a spoon for our chilled sobe. Okay. I'm sure if you serve this on any hot day, it will come out fantastic. So this watermelon sobe is a good memory for that day. Yeah, and I told you I ate a lot of watermelon in China. Hmm. This is so satisfying. Try it. Watermelon, condensed milk, and some mint it's so so satisfying freeze for like an hour to two because of time we really couldn't wait for it to stay up to two hours but this is just chilled enough mm. try it and send me pictures okay so next week we continue with the other part of the forbidden city and into the town of Beijing to all the other things that we saw See you next week.